heart attack Fast fatal heart impact Past painful scars In fact, I blast tasteful bars And past I back up my actions Fact, don't ask Grab reactions Jack attack with every word Then act with class As they hear me snap I got nothing to lose Cause I fought and felt the bruise Now I'm not the one confused Call the shots and they produce I ain't lost, I'm finally loose Pick a new so urge juice I need the views to boost me To a new abuse of being used Everybody wants a piece now Y'all can rest in peace now You're dead to me, so peace out Remember you're discreet now Get ready for the Alrighty, now, this is very late, and I meant to do it a long, long time ago, it was still fresh in my mind, and I know that this play does not help now, but I did at least want to get it out there to help people with some unanswered questions. So, Ultraviolet Lantern Deku. That's rolling off my tongue. Sounds very familiar. I just hit my microphone. Anyways, this was my longest series on my channel. Technically, it's 58 parts long, not 56. And, well, I wanted to answer some questions that you guys might have been left with for this series. And, I guess I should start with that. First off, whenever Midoriya rebooted his Earth, or, well, universe, after slaying Darkseid, he did not create a new 52. He created a version of it, however the only difference was that the Justice League did not exist. People knew of their whereabouts. From them saving the universe, or and or possibly saving the Earth. People knew, of them, knew that they existed at one point. However, they couldn't name their lives, or whatever they did. They knew that they protected the Earth, but they just didn't know how. Midoriya had statues put up of them. In order to honor Superman, his way of repaying him, for essentially the power. He put up statues of the Just League so as to allow people to remember them. And at least pass on some knowledge that he knew. Along with that Earth becoming the hub for the Red Lantern Power Battery, the Ultraviolet Power Battery, and the Green Lantern Power Battery. That was three power batteries. Now, after Midoriya did all this, and his power as the Superman 1 million disappeared, the power being used to create the multiverse or, and or recreate his universe, one thing happened. He was left with his lantern abilities. Him and Jiro went on to live a bit of a normal life for a while. However, Midoriya was seen as the real only powerful superhero. He was still seen as the Superman and his daughter still had Kryptonian abilities, meaning that she was the new last son and or last daughter of Krypton, basically, taking Superman's place. As for Midoriya's twins, the two children that he had with Jiro, the other change in the timeline was that instead of one baby being born, Jiro had a set of twins. And not only did they carry her quirk, but they also had Midoriya's remarkable powers. Both of them were born with a version of the Ultraviolet Lantern power. However, Midoriya's body and or very soul basically being merged with this Ion power and or Omega power, Ion, that's the fish the Omega Power. They soon began to develop more color spectrum powers and or variations of the Nth Metal Powers. Basically, one day, one of his kids could sprout wings and or do other things. I will leave that up to your guys' imagination since I don't want to answer everything all at once. And after that... Midoriya and Jiro somewhat lived a happy, normal life. 
Midoriya was still a superhero, and so was she. Until Midoriya did decide to create another lantern rank. Another Omega lantern rank. This basically meaning the two were connected. Now, as for Death the Lantern, and or the Black Lanterns, I don't want to say they escaped the Source Wall, but at the same time I did want to do something with them. However, if I did a whole, basically, Black Lantern event, that means that a lot of characters will come back to life, and Death would have been meaningless. Now, as to why Midoriya and Jiro do not use the Lazarus Pit to maintain eternal life, they simply did not want to. Midoriya, after 20 years of traveling through the multiverse, decided to simply be human. Now, I know this is probably going to be a big one, like a very big question. Who was Dr. Fate? Funny enough, one idea I had oh, was to just straight up say that he's Mineta, and or a version of him. Ideally, that would be hilarious, but I didn't really think that it would be a good idea, so I kind of just didn't say who it was. And, well, Eri in that timeline. After Midoriya reformed the Justice League and began to recruit heroes with strange abilities, they simply had Eri, who was, well, on board with the idea. Her and Koda became Ultraviolet Lanterns, and began training to try and take on other Lantern Corps. Eri eventually fell into the Star Sapphires, and Koda... I want to say that he fell into the Red Lantern core. The two had a bad breakup, but eventually they were able to come back together. And, quite simply, go on to live a life together. And what about uh, what else about it? You do have Meihatsume, who basically became this universe's version of Cyborg. I do want to say that she went on to create many te different versions of, te of technology. And whenever she started to get very, very old and, well, her body started to wear down, she began to augment herself with technology. Up until the point where she eventually had to draw a line in the sand. And Intelli helped her out, downloading her consciousness into an organic body. Not organic. A machine-like body. And, well, allowing her to continue her work for a bit of time. Until her body malfunctioned and she died. She was given extended life, not eternal life. And then there's Sayako and Telly. With her basically turning into a brainiac alien, I'm not really sure what to say there. I'm not sure exactly how long his species lives, but considering about, what was it, I said probably, that was Midoriya and Jiro's third life, and they lived 70 years, meaning that roughly about 70, if I go on another 80, add probably 15 or 20, that would be around 180 years, making her somewhere over 200 years old, if she stayed a brainiac like alien and had an extended lifespan. I do want to say that eventually, she just started to collect more information, and she spent a lot of time going around the galaxies. And up until her death, she actually did at least love. She loved her work and her knowledge. So she created a clone of herself to continue things on. And, well, yeah. It was basically a clone 
daughter, or a clone son, a clone child, really. Basically, she just messed with XY chromosomes. Now, along with that, you do have Bakugo. His family, yeah. Shortly after rebirth, you could say, his family lived a good life. Ochako was the Phantom Lantern, and she loved that title. However, she did have to hang up the ring again after she got pregnant, and Bakugo and her had another child, this one with the abilities of the Speed Force. And Bakugo, he was able to get Sayako to help create a suit, along with Mei. It basically would change his son's biology a little bit, and or help him harness the speed force. Albeit not in the same capacity as his little brother, or his father, but in some form of capacity. Him basically taking on the role of Kid Flash, since he is slower. Now, Kendo. She was the user of One for All. And I do want to say that in this timeline, she eventually decided to pass down the quirk and retire. Eventually, she did fall in love with somebody and live out the rest of her days. Then there is Karishima. Now, I do want to say that him and Mina eventually tied the knot, and had kids. And I believe that that really is some of the only questions I can think of. Other than that, if I try and go into the whole future timeline, where things change with Darkseid, and or the Doomsday Superman, just generally stating, in that version of events, Doomsday didn't attack. And he wasn't thrown into the source wall. Instead, Midoriya threw him into outer space towards the sun. And Darkseid eventually got him back. And then he was put into. Well, I wouldn't say the Phantom Zone. He was put into a certain place or a certain spot where he was forced to mature. And he was let loose against Midoriya. Their battle, it was crazy and intense. In that timeline, Midoriya's clone stepped in and gave Midoriya an upper hand in taking down Doomsday. And, well, that's whenever he was infected with the Doomsday virus. And Doomsday was sealed away in the Phantom Zone shortly after. Now... That is how that future version of Midoriya got infected. Then there's Midoriya's clone, who I actually completely forgot about. I want to say that Midoriya's clone, in that timeline... Now, her name is Maxima. She is the queen of a planet. She's basically looking for... a husband, you could say. Basically, her species is a warrior race, and they seek the strongest. She had a weird fascination for Superman. And after he kicked the bucket and Midoriya was revealed to be a Kryptonian, she heard rumors. Especially since he's also the most war-torn blood pa the, the one with the most blood in his hands in the complete universe. And she's heard stories about him, along with the rumor that he's gotten Kryptonian abilities. Now, but Midoriya's clone in this timeline, the new one, basically after trying to figure out what he was and who he was, and trying to become his own person, he decided to travel the universe. And, well... This woman tagged along with him. Eventually, he decided to take her up on an offer. Go back to her planet and become king. Since 
him and Midoriya were the strongest people in the known universe. Him being able to create, keep his Kryptonian abilities, being the other last person of Krypton. As for the whole reincarnation thing with Midoriya and Jiro, they were stabbed and impaled whenever Owlman got them with the Nth Metal Sword. That and a combination of them rolling into the Lazarus Pit and their lantern rings, tapping into the color spectrum, I want to say that basically their souls became infused with their rings. And or each other. Basically all of them combining all at once. Not only increasing control and willpower, but allowing them to boost themselves. That is why whenever they get, got so emotional, their skin and basically body started turning into pure emotion. Now, I believe that that does clear up most of it. Now, as for how exactly, in the future timeline, Midoriya's daughter was able to come back. And, well, get here. She sort of used a speed force. Whenever you use a speed force, it's like a sonic boom. Whenever you break the sound barrier, except this was a time boom. That's how her timeline was able to separate from our timeline. Midoriya's interaction with Doomsday was not supposed to happen. That was a time boom. Ripple effects in the past that changed. And that is how Midoriya so was able to deal with Doomsday. And, quite simply, the reason why she was even able to get there in the first place was because of a specialized drug that you can take if you're not a speedster. Velocity 9. In the future, it was rumored to be around. Except the only one who took it was Bakugo's son. He took the drug in order to try and help out. He was well aware of what it can do to his body, and that it can kill him. But, well, he stayed behind. Instead of him jumping through, he forced Midoriya's daughter through to the past since he was already dying. The drug, well, there wasn't enough of it left anyways. If he went back in time, he would quite simply just be a normal person, while she would be a Kryptonian. Now, I do believe that that does help to clear up everything. As for Hal Jordan, where he was in all of this, now, just like how Umbrax, oh wow, that's a name I haven't said in forever, just like how he does have his own invisible galaxy, I do want to say that Hal Jordan found it, basically a place in space where he could not be disturbed, nor could he even be found. He created constructs on that planet, and, well... With him basically being a homicidal maniac with the power of a battery at his disposal, he was able to recreate his city and live out the rest of his days there until the universe rebooted. Whenever it rebooted, he was still there. And he lived out the rest of his days on that planet until all that was basically left was a corpse with a lantern ring. And it, quite simply, went out looking for someone in the universe to become the new Umbrax. A title with power and very, very huge abilities. Now, it did not choose a human. Instead, it tried choosing someone. And Saint Walker eventually found this piece of technology, or this ring. And they locked it up somewhere. 
somewhere where it cannot be used. Since it's a very dangerous piece of technology. A ring with the power of a lantern core battery. Completely self-sufficient and endless impossibilities. That is too much power for one person to wield. And he's seen what one person has done with it before. But, however, that person was the right person. Now, I do believe that that does cover a lot about this series. And if you guys do have any more questions, do not be afraid to ask. And, well, I thought about doing this for another series. But, well, thanks. I'd have to go through that one. Anyway, guys, I do hope you enjoyed.